And now we come to Russell Spence's first ever Formula 3000 Birmingham Super Prix. This young man is an aspiring Grand Prix star. What looks like a gentle spin through the streets is vital preparation for his next race. The venue, Birmingham, or more precisely, the streets of Birmingham. For the first time in Britain, a city centre becomes a race circuit. Russell Spence is 26, son of a Bradford builder. Six years ago, he competed locally in hill climbs for fun. Now he races all over the world and is regarded by many as the next Briton to make the break into Formula One. He's a typical Yorkshireman, blunt, aggressive and totally determined. Ideal qualities for this most dangerous of sports. The people that are prepared to drive the 10 tents, the one inch away from the barriers on the exit, will get quite an advantage at Birmingham. Um, on a circuit, if you make a slight mistake, you can go over the curves on the grass and collect it all up. If you make one small mistake on a street race, um, you just finished. The circuit's full of unique challenges thrown down by designer John Richardson. Up here we're going to be touching about 150, 160. You know, the only yeah. thing on the, the bump there seems rather locked the braking area. Yes, well, we've taken out a substantial amount of the bump and really it's about as much as we can get yeah. uh, for the road to be usable in normal condition yeah. and I think this is, is where it comes down to the skill of the racing driver oh, picking his line. Again, <laughs> yeah. One of the big problems with roundabouts is, is that if you go off and hit one they don't move so far unlike an Armco barrier where it'll move and you've got catch fencing to slow you down before you hit anything solid. The only dangerous thing really about Birmingham that I can see is the shortage of runoff areas in certain places. This is the driver's eye view of the circuit at saloon car speed, but it's no family runabout that Russell will be strapped into. The Formula 3000 is very, very competitive. We're using the Cosworth three litre engines. They're a V8 engine that they used to use in Formula 1 four years ago, and that's given us somewhere between 450 and 460 brake horsepower and it's actually pushing about half the weight of a mini metro so you can tell the kind of speeds it's very very quick and on a circuit such as birmingham people have said that we might see 200 miles an hour russell's rise through the sport has been nothing less than meteoric in 81 we started in formula 4 2000 we won three races and set three lap records in 1982, we stayed in Formula 4 2000 and won a small championship, which once again was better than the year before. In 1983, we won three championships in Formula 4 2000. We won the European Championship, we won the Donington Championship, and we were the first British driver ever to win the Golden Lion Championship. So that was an improvement. In 1984, we got into Formula 3, um, and basically, we, we signed contracts with someone and we hadn't raised a penny. And that's the harsh reality of motorsport. No matter how talented you are, without money, you don't race. Russell's last chance, the flamboyant chairman of a local radiator company. I mean, I was in the shit. There's no question of it. I think it was three weeks before the race in the start started. I'd, I'd, I've got a £100,000 commitment. I've got £20,000 coming in and no future at all, basically. And as soon as I saw Bill Blanford, I don't know why, but I suddenly, I suddenly found myself thinking, that's where my future lies. Obviously. Yes, we've, um, we've been looking at this as a proposition. Yes. And, uh, well, obviously, we're talking quite a lot of money. And it's very opportune that, you know, this, this proposition's come along at this time. I, I feel that it's it's going to be, you know, very much to our advantage. Now, what I'm going to say to you is, because, uh, obviously, as a successful company, we look for a little bit of success. In principle, yes, you've got a deal. And the start of a successful partnership. By the middle of his first year in Formula 3, Russell is second in the British Championship. 
only headed by Johnny, the Earl of Dumfries. Now at Silverstone, they're both taking on the top Europeans. The starting grid for the race is decided on practice times. At this level, hundredths of a second are vital. To be competitive means endless laps of the track, trying out one minute adjustment after another. At 160 miles an hour, everything is at the limit. Car, engine, tyres and the driver. The pressure to succeed is such that it's no surprise that tempers get frayed, along with the tyres. going too hard on them? What about the camera? Half a turn? Leave the step. Up. Richard, check the backup, please. What the overheated was? No, they're not overheated. What is it? Going that hard on them this quick? It's, they're, they're just too. Yes, but that's stupid. What about the rear? Huh? What about the rear? I'm trying to get rear uh, from What we're doing, we're knocking a bit of camera off it. Great. Should we knock a little bit of this front wing off? <laughs> Let them cool off a bit. Right. Throw some water on them if you've got some. Yeah. Just cool them off a bit and leave them for a bit. Let them cure up a little bit more. That isn't too hot, is it? Water off. Yeah. Team manager Glenn Waters has seen it all before. As a chief mechanic for Lotus, he helped Mario Andretti to a world championship. Now he has to cope with Russell and his problems. Glenn. Hello. Just a minute, Russell. It's all right. A bit more water, and just turn That's it as you gone. do. Take it off. I can't take it off. You've got nothing else to run on. I've got that here. No, you ain't running on there. Right, we won't run. Wait, yeah. listen. Just calm I'm down. I'm not fucking going now. I'm going to tie with it all. Eh? It ain't got a hole in it. Well, it's all blistered. Just, just calm down. Just. Please. What times are we doing, Glenn? 24.5 is a good time. Who's quicker? 24.1 burger. What's he put on? Another A. Hang on. So we're putting the D on. We don't have any D's mounted. We've got to mount another one. We'll, we'll probably try it for tomorrow in a warm up. So shall I try this now? That's what I'm saying. We try this. Right. Don't go too hard on it. If it shows any signs of getting a bit slimy at the back, come in. We all work very, very closely. It's very frustrating when it's behind Johnny, whether it's one tenth or two tenths or half a second, because then it's either down to me or down to the car. And for sure we get onto each other, and for sure we push each other to extremes. And I think that's why we've been so successful this year. He's a very aggressive driver. He's a driver that you have to um, restrain more than help along. You know, he's, um, I wouldn't say he's headstrong to that extent, but he wants to get going as fast as possible. And I think the people that tomorrow go too fast will suffer. It's going to be a race that's won by a bloke who uses his head. Russell keeps his head, sets a new lap record and finishes second, just behind Johnny Dumfries and ahead of Gerhard Berger, both now Formula One regulars. I mean, in racing, you get a lot, a lot of problems. I mean, there's a lot of, of self-doubt. I mean, if you're in a bad car and you're finishing fifth, 
you start to wonder whether it's you or the car. All the way through this, the family's never doubted me, which, which is a really special thing. And they've always supported me 100%, um, both financially and, and more, you know, everything, everything I've always done, they've always backed me with. Young men want to do stuff, you can't stop them. There's lads climbing mountains and everything. And I think all you can do is support them and make it as safe as possible for them to do the thing they enjoy doing. I'm always pleased when Russell does well, but uh, I never can bring myself to sort of watch him. There again, I'd never stop him, and I'm just, uh, I'm just so pleased that he can do what he wants to do, because that's the main thing in life, really, doing what you want to do. 84 saw another Mrs. Spence. Obviously, Nikki worries a great deal about what I do. <clears throat> She's very aware that one day, perhaps, I'll go away and I won't come back. You know, it's as simple as that, but it's an attitude that we've both accepted, and we've both come, you know, we've both come to terms with that. Um, it's a drawback of the profession that I'm in and the lifestyle that we lead. It's something you just, you just don't think about it. Well, I don't think about it. Every time he goes racing or goes testing, I just think, OK, he's going testing, I'll see him when he gets back. I try not to think of a time when I might not see him. You know, you just... just why think about it? There. Oh, hello. Is he all right? bubbles. Yeah. Just over a year later, further responsibilities with the arrival of Jonathan. Good afternoon. Thank you. Oh, he's wide awake. I thought he was asleep. For Russell, the peace and tranquility of family life in the Dells is a total contrast to the racetrack. Even the constant battle to keep fit seems more pleasant up here. For 85, it's a winning formula. Four victories in his first six races to dominate the British Formula 3 Championship. This is what he's aiming for, Formula One. Russell's big chance to impress the top team managers comes here at Silverstone. Formula Three is the main support race to the British Grand Prix. As championship leader, he's the man under scrutiny. But as ever in motor racing, talent is only one factor. The team Russell has been driving for is on the verge of bankruptcy. As the other teams prepare, there is only a space where Russell's car should be. But he does have help. The car manufacturers are letting him use a brand new chassis for the weekend, and his regular mechanics are building it up. They have just 18 hours left to finish the car and get it to Silverstone. How is Russell coping? It's been very difficult because the, I mean, this race is probably the most important race of my career. Um, there's all the Formula One teams here. Um, we've been organising engines, organising cars, organising gearboxes, tyres, fuel, race entries, everything basically. But it all comes together. The new car is immaculate and, perhaps predictably, even the sign writing is finished. Now Russell has just two half-hour sessions to both run in his car and set a good time. And we've got a brand new car. We went out there, we had no real problems, no engine problems, a slight gearbox problem in third gear. Um, the main problem were the front shock absorbers, unfortunately. Uh, the lads were working very late last night and chose the wrong length and it just locked the front suspension up for the whole session. To say that on Wednesday we didn't have no equipment, no car, no engine or anything, I mean they've done a superb job just to even get us out there. The mechanics are not the only ones remaining loyal. For his main backers too, it's been a frantic rescue operation. Bill Blanford now finds himself owning a team, not just sponsoring one. Others too remain convinced that Russell is still a sound investment. We looked at Russell last year. Um, I followed his progress for a couple of years, and I, I mean, for my candid opinion and the company's, I think he's our best buy. I think you have to sort of look at Russell's uh, mental approach to it. I mean, he's 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 a goer. He he won't give up it very much, you know. So I think uh, that stands him alone in very very good stead. He's never nervous. He's always prepared to have a go at something, which um, you know I, I think he ranks as almost the young Keke Rosberg. Williams are one of the top teams in Formula One. Where does team boss Frank Williams look for new driving talent? Formula Three is a natural stepping stone, if you like, to Formula One. And for 10 years, I've been aware of who's who, and for 10 years, I've been paying attention and watching the occasional Formula Three race. 
Mm. It's a very difficult thing because Formula One is so expensive. Um, so it's unrealistic for me to turn around and say I can bring six, seven million dollars because I can't. What I've got to do is out there prove that I've got the ability and hope that one of the established teams are going to take notice and um, going to give me a chance. And for sure, this is the only time this year we're with them. Um, so for sure, it's very important. There's so much money involved. I mean, it's for anyone driver to bring half a million or a million pounds to help secure or guarantee a drive. Um, I think that most people in my position would be interested purely in talent. If the guy's going to do your team any good or not. All this group are trying to prove that they have that talent. But Russell's car is a real handful. Obviously we're further back. Unfortunately, we thought we had the answer yesterday, but unfortunately as racing goes, we didn't quite find it. We ended up with the same problem today. In fact, if anything, a little bit worse. It's unrealistic to look at a win now. What we've got to do is consolidate as close to the head of the championship. But it wasn't to be. The season that started so well faded badly. Russell finished only third in the championship. Obviously, I've gone over it in my mind maybe a million times about how, you know, how and where it went wrong. I think basically, uh, initially it started off with financial problems and unfortunately the team that we were with didn't come to either myself or Bill Blanford from Warmercell and discuss the matter. Um, they tried to hide the fact and then when it came to an end, they came up with impossible, uh, impossible terms for us trying to help them. Um, and once we were behind, technically, I mean, there's just no way you can catch up on people like Eddie Jordan, Dick Bennett, Murray Taylor. You just can't catch them people. Um, and we were behind and unfortunately it didn't come off. As I say, on the positive side, it's been a great year for me. I've perhaps crammed four years of racing bullshit in one year. But now it's back to sponsor chasing. How much time does that take? Uh, during the winter, all the time. Um, in the summer, we're testing cars and in the winter, this is permanently all I do. You know, all we do is drive from one sponsor to another, putting proposals forward to everybody who we can. It's easy to turn around and say, well, why don't you concentrate on racing? Basically, if I'd have concentrated totally on the racing, I would have not have raised the finance to get as far as what we've got. British drivers have got to go out there and work their ass off to get sponsorship. And I think we all do it and we all work very hard. How are you, Mr. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Rob, how are you? Thanks. Thank you for Russell's you. move up to Formula 3000 means he needs double last year's money. At this level, he's selling not only himself, but the events. Birmingham is a, is a street race. It's going to be the first street race in England. Um, so from the point of view, it's impossible to get marquees around the circuit because obviously they exist in shops and that. Uh, what we're going to have to do there is organise hotels. And I think if Mount Lee get involved, I think it's something that we're going to have to move on very, very quickly. We've seen Russell's progress uh, over the years, uh, been very impressed. We uh, feel that as a Yorkshire-based company, we ought to be looking to support someone like Russell from Yorkshire. And we believe that it will be an investment for us in the future. Uh, we, at this stage, can uh, use uh, hospitality at races, and there's always more interest if you've got somebody involved in the race than just taking people uh, to a meeting and watching a lot of cars go around. Uh, but in the end, we believe you'll get into Formula One and uh, we'll get some of our money back at that stage. To be a professional racing driver, the easy bit is on the circuit. The hard bit where, and where I've had to change such a lot is to deal with people, the PR side of it, the raising the money of it, and, you know, dealing with people in general. Every penny that we get through um, sponsorship always goes to the team. It's unfair to ask people to not only run the car, but actually run me and all. I've got a big commitment there, and I've got to make Formula One to get out of the debt that I'm in. But I'd like to think my sponsors respect me for that, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to also think that they know that I'm in there with them financially. Last year, uh, we've had two meetings now. I mean, how do you feel? I mean, dare I ask you for a decision uh, one way or another now, Ian? Oh yes, we've made the decision. We're, we're going to, uh, we're going to have another season with you. We had half the season with you last year, and very much enjoyed it. Uh, and this year, we're going to do the full season with you. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you. That's really Best of luck. Thank you. It's a hard life. Determination and perseverance are as crucial on the streets as on the track. Hello? Could you send him in, please? A definite answer is very much the exception, either way. Right. <clears throat> I'm 
unfortunately at the moment, you've come a little bit late in the day. I've already budgeted it, you know, last September for the next six to 12 months. Uh, unfortunately, my answer at this stage is going to have to be no. Well, thank you for the time. I appreciate that and thank you for listening. And we'll keep in touch. Yes, that's fine. Great, I'll keep pestering. <laughs> Our budget is 300,000 this year, which is a lot, a lot of money. It's very difficult um, to raise that sort of money because obviously I'm going international races. It isn't as though all my races are in England. Warmer Style, okay, I have a long talk with Bill. We've got the letter through and everything, and everything's looking good from Warmer Style's point of view. Mount Lee's in the same situation. I've been with Mr. Clegg, and I've finally got the okay this morning off Mr. Clegg. So we're going ahead with the Mount Lee thing. Charlie Browns has come through. Now, I've got this telex from you from what we need from Charlie Browns. I'm going to pass that on later today. I'm going to call across there. So that's looking good. Now, right. Okay. Now, the other thing is, Jimbo, this RI deal that you're looking after and the Lucas deal, how are they looking? I don't like this design on the flat background. I mean, obviously, it's starting to take shape now, but... I think we're going to have problems in the area of bringing the stripes round. I mean, what have you thought about that? One of the hardest things I've found this year is to, with having three major sponsors, is to keep everybody happy. I mean, constantly, every time I meet them, they always remind me how small uh, their signs are. And it's very hard, very hard to juggle. Now, where the sponsors are going, in England, you see, the problem is, Ellen, on the pods, we're going to have warmer style, as in this one. Um, on the cockpit, it's going to be Mount Lee, which are going to stay there all year. And on the tail back there, it's going to be Browns. But for Europe, uh, Warmer Style gets dropped off there and gets put in there, there and Fiat Alice come onto the pods. Yeah? They are ideal. I think it's $5,000, $2,500. Okay, then. Well, look, I'll get back to you on that. Thank you. Bye. A New Year bonus, the prestigious Grovewood Award as the best up-and-coming young driver, presented to Russell by world champion Alain Prost. With the season approaching, Russell can finally get back behind the wheel. People kind of think that we turn up and, and just race, and that isn't strictly too true, far from it. What happens is that for that race, which lasts maybe one and a half hours to two hours, uh, we'll probably do something like 17 hours testing to prepare for that race. And that's 17 hours of going round and round and round, checking brakes, checking suspension, checking everything. <laughs> Literally, we're looking for tenths here, hundredths here, and let's face it, if throughout 400 laps in testing, we can find 10 very, very small things all that make a tenth of a second, then we've found a second. I mean, that's a rather lot. I mean, we go testing for three days and find two tenths. Sometimes we go testing for three days and lose three tenths. It's that, you know, it is very critical. Now, our cars are set up to taking bumps. Their only purpose is to go fast. And to go fast, they've got to be very stiff so that they don't roll. Unfortunately, that isn't very good for drivers. There's many times when you have two days testing that you literally can't do a thing for three or four days. You're so stiff and you get such a battering in the car. For me, it's one of the most exhilarating experiences ever. It's the sense of speed that's been low down. Nothing can replace that feeling for me. It's, it's maybe, it's everything. In the asshole, no matter how big it got, could never take away my enjoyment of motor race. Russell is definitely the next British driver likely to succeed and get into Formula One. Uh, Racing for Britain basically is an organisation dedicated to support drivers at lower levels from Formula 4 to 1600 right the way through into Formula 1. Um, we have achieved this twice to date. Uh, we assisted Martin Brundle, who now drives for the Tyrrell organisation, and Jonathan Palmer, who drives for Zach Speed in Formula 1. Um, 
Without a doubt, Russell is the most promising of the up-and-coming breeds. I'll be there. It might take me two or three years to, to be as good as someone as Prost, to learn about turbos, to learn about Formula One cars. It might take me two or three years for a team such as Williams to turn around and think, look, you're a good driver. We're going to give you an opportunity now of winning the World Championship. But I'll get there. Even with that determination, this year has brought Russell little success. But a change of teams two weeks ago has brought a change of fortunes. In Birmingham, watch out for the Bradford Builder. And in the Birmingham race, Russell Spence finished sixth. But while his Grand Prix ambitions never materialised, the motorsport world has not heard the last of him. Watch this space. 